Hello everybody and welcome back to another day of a, another day, another day, day 46 of 100 Days Code and this is what we're going to be building, I'm going to show you a demo right now. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Okay guys, as you can see, I have built a drawing app where you can change the colour and change the width of the pen tool So you can draw your own little stuff in here um, you can change code to whatever code you want, you can use RGBA values in here such as 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5 and actually when we click here and now we start drawing you can see it's got some transparency to it you can see the circles ever so often the longer you hold in one spot the uh the more it um draws the black dots so you can see it gets darker and darker the longer you hold in one spot so the slower you do this the darker line be but as quicker you do it you'll see the more transparency you can see so you cross over the lines of course and then we end up with this canvas where we're just scribbling 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 Woo! let's go guys so and we're going to clear the canvas so this is what we're going to be building today i hope you enjoy we're going to be using this in vanilla javascript but i might do a few js uh, tutorial on this same sort of topic but this time building a proper full-on component base where you can save the images to a database surfer uh, using node.js or something similar so let me know if you're interested in that and let's get on with it i'm sorry for shouting we need to create a new di uh, we're in a directory we need to just open this up in our, our code editor so i'm just gonna write code dot we're using visual studio basic today which is a amazing text editor i recommend it highly um but again it's not necessarily you can use any text editor you want you can even use your default text editor with no syntax high and although i don't recommend it because that'd be very boring let's create a file in our, our root directory called index.html and call that i'm then going to press Control alt t there you go to then write surf dot which is an npm module so you can write you can run in your terminal if you have nodes js installed the is nodejs.org and just install any version and you'll be able to run npm i dash g surf but i recommend i don't recommend it but sometimes it'll fail permission so you need to write sudo at the start um, it depends how you set up your how you installed it um but yeah so you run that so for now once you've done that and installed that you can run surf dot and hit this and bam there you go yeah local stuff you can even open this up by just double clicking the html file although i do recommend um doing it this way because it's just better so now if we refresh over here you see we've got a blank page nothing on it let's open up our terminal just to double check oh let's open up in a new page let's uh let's get this and let's dock it to the right side and there we go we can see a, a, just a blank body page literally nothing here so let's run Emmet. so that was a quick way using Emmet, which already built into vs code just to write out a quick boilerplate for this HTML page. This is an HTML tutorial, so if you want to learn HTML, probably either don't don't probably probably look somewhere else. I haven't done HTML tutorial yet, but I will if you want it, guys. Uh, so right, let's write canvas drawing app. Woo. Okay. Cool. So ne next up, we're gonna get uh, link CSS, and we're gonna say main dot min dot CSS, and then we're gonna get a script. So we're gonna say scripts gonna be assets slash JavaScript slash main dot JS. I should have also done that here. Assets slash CSS slash main dot CSS. Okay, so I do recommend you have um, a SAS compiler installed because we will be using SAS today. But you can write this in plain CSS if you really wish. Um, there's not much difference except from I will be nesting my CSS where you would not be nesting your CSS. Uh, let's go in here. Let's type in here. Oh, no, we don't need a file yet. We need a new directory, JS, uh, which didn't actually work. JavaScript. And then in there, we're going to get main.js. Well, we're going to run a log. Hello? Log. Console.log. Oh, God, my my syntax highlight, my autocomplete isn't working. That's never good. Hello world, and let it save. Let's go back over here, and let's also create our um, our SAS folder with a file in there called main.sass. And we're going to head over to the code from over here, and we're going to copy and paste this in, because I don't want to have to rewrite this out too many times. But I'm just going to quickly show you, I'm going to zoom up quickly. Actually, no, that's really close. So I've got some variables in SAS, which again, in CSS, you won't be using this. You could use root variables, but you could just paste these in where these where light is 
three three three, darkest one seven one seven, and primary is my yellow, or any colour you want. Uh, so in the body we've got some resets, uh, margin zero, padding zero. We've got a width of a hundred vertical width or few box few port width and few port height for the height. We're setting the background to the light color up here, and we're just setting a font family. Although it's not necessary, I don't think, because we only have what one letter in this whole thing. Um, we've got a main component which we'll be setting up inside our markup soon. So actually, let's do that now. We've got two things. So we're going to set up our canvas and we're going to set up our main. And they are the two things we need. That is it. So we've got a main. Uh, I think I should. Oh, yep, we need to save that. And as you see down here, I've got this. So before we go through the rest of this, I've got this watch SAS uh, compiler. Uh, let me show you my settings for this. So you can install this via an extension over here. I'll show you who it's made by. It's made by Ritwick Day, I believe. Yep, Ritwick Day made the live SAS compiler. So if you see here, we've got compile SAS or SCSS uh, to CSS at real time with live browser reload. So, yep, you can install this. And then I'm going to show you my settings I have for this because I have changed them slightly and not to the default. So if I go to live SAS compiler and edit in JSON, You'll see down here, these are my settings. You can feel free to copy them, but the main one you really need to know about is this one here for where it saves my files and how it saves my files. Again, if you, hopefully you already know how SAS works. If not, probably check out some of my other videos because I go more in depth with it there. Um, and if you want me to do a tutorial on how to get started with SAS, compiling and everything, setting up from scratch and doing everything, uh, installing it and everything, then let me know and we can crack on with that in another video. But for now, actually, in our main... Uh, file we set it to position absolute to the body uh, we set it to the top left and bottom of zero and we only give it a width of 50 pixels we set the background color to dark then for every section we create inside of the main we set it equal to a block of 15 pixels auto so it's centered with 30 pixels height width and height uh, we set the dot colors to background dark Border one pixel side light so we can see the dark inside of it. Because obviously dark on dark is going to be the exact same thing. You're not going to see that colour. And then we set the position to relative. Uh, we're going over to colour picker which is going to be obviously the pop-up which we get. It's not actually a picker. It's more of just you type in a hex code or an RGBA or any equivalent value that works in uh, JavaScript. And we'll say display none. Uh, width 200 pixels, height 25 pixels. Actually, we're going to set 30 pixels to that, uh, and that should be fine. Position absolute, top 50%, left 30 pixels to negate the width of 30 pixels for each section. And transform, translate, y of minus 50%. Uh, then we set the focus, so when we focus on it, it will display, and when we hover over our colors block, we also set it to display. And then thickness is the exact same thing, just with thickness, but we use this after content instead to actually be able to add like a cool little dot in the middle of it to show it's a thickness, although it doesn't actually, it just looks like dot in the middle of a white block. But yeah, you can see this CSS here, I'm not going to go through it too much. If you guys want this, it'll be up on GitHub where you can check it out there um, and you can get all this CSS. So this is mainly it, we've got this clear here, which is the clear button at the bottom, and then this, this is actually irrelevant, I don't actually use it, I was going to and I never did. So there you go, but now when I, when now if I click watch SAS, this is going to compile it into our file, so if we go over here, you'll see we've got a new CSS file with a minified uh, version of that SAS, so that is fine, that is all ready to go. So now let's go over here, let's hit refresh, and as you're going to see, we have a canvas, uh, and we have the main, and as you can see, the main is already set out. We have an error which is cannot read property value of null for main JS10. Why is there a main JS10? There's only one. Sorry? Hello world. Okay, that printed nicely. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was trying to, it had some caching issues. So we've got canvas. Um, we've got the canvas and. We don't add any styling to that and okay so let's crack on so we have this main and inside this main we're going to add in a colors section so a section with the class of colors we're then going to add a color picker inside of here and i can't remember do we use i think we use a, a diff it'll be fine we'll use a diff um, and inside the diff we're going to put an input of the type of text uh, it doesn't need a name or an ID. It will take a class, 
which is equal to, oh, not dot, that's if we're using a query selector. It will take a class of, oh, my bad, sorry, we don't need this diff, actually. That was completely wrong with diff list right now. Uh, we need to add that color pickers class to this input field. Oh. And that should be good. We're going to set a default value of our dark, um, our dark input. And let's create another section with the color, the class of thickness. And in there, we're going to have an input of number because this is going to be a number value. We don't want to be passing any string through here. And this is going to be equal to class of uh, stroke weight, I believe. And then we're going to set a value equal to 3 as the default. Okay, and now we're going to add a button with the class of clear, which is just going to have an X in it. And now if we hit save and we go back here and we hit refresh, actually we get our buttons there. And that's all done for the CSS. Again, the CSS will be in the GitHub repository, so you can always go and check that out if you do it or you can style it up yourself i do challenge you to style it up yourself send me a screenshot of what you've done on my twitter handle at tyler underscore pots underscore the link will be in the description also so there you go you got this so you see we just hover out we've got this and that and that and this so that is how that works um oh we didn't add the and hover to that or the and focus to that so let's do that quickly. So we've got this and focus display block. Let's just put that inside of the stroke weight. To be fair, we could have gave these the exact same class and just classed them out. So it, was, it would always be the same because I don't think they're pretty much the same. They just are different types. There you go. So that is how that works. And so now actually when we move around, we can and we can change this value to four, five, six, seven, all the way up to like a million. But I wouldn't suggest doing that because it'll probably break, break your computer as you try and paste or try and draw. So now let's get our canvas up to scratch. So as you can see at the minute, our canvas is just sat there dying in the back, right? It's doing nothing. We don't want that. We want to get the canvas up. So let's go into our JavaScript and let's actually get a variable uh, of canvas is equal to document.query doc, oh, I spelled document wrong. document.query selector and we're going to set this to canvas because we want to get the canvas we're then going to get the context so in javascript canvases you can set the context uh equal to e for 2d oh what am i doing this needs to be canvas canvas dot get context and we're going to set this to 2d this could be webgl which is uh either a 2d or a um a webgl once we have done that, we can then set the, we can create a function called resize canvas, where we're just going to say the canvas.width is equal to window.inner oh, inner width, and the canvas.height is equal to window.inner height. And that is just going to make sure it sets. And we're going to call this when we star our app. And we're also going to call this in a window .add event listener resize function. And we're just going to say resize canvas. So when we resize, we're just going to make sure that is all resizing correctly. So let's check that work. Let's hit refresh and go into canvas. And as you can see, it's now the height and width of my page. So that is always good. Um, all right, so now we've got our canvas and we've got our context. We need to start drawing, but what, how do we start drawing? We need to set up some functions, right? We want to say we want to set up a variable saying let is drawing is equal to false because we're not drawing straight away, and this is what we're going to use when we start drawing. We're then going to say canvas dot add event listener, and we're going to say mouse down. So when we click our mouse down inside of the canvas, we want to call a function. We'll call this start. We then want to call a canvas.add event listener on mouse move, which means as soon as we start moving, we're going to call a draw function. And then, so one, if our mouse is down, we're going to set this equal to true. And then once we set that to true, inside draw, we're going to check if, we're, if we are drawing, if our mouse is down. And everywhere it moves, we're then going to draw a function. We're then going to add an event listener for mouse uh, up which means as soon as we as soon as we stop clicking it will stop drawing 
So that is how that is going to work. We want to set a few options too with this, but first let's let's get drawing first. So let's give a function equal to start. And we're going to pass through E, which is the event we're going to pass through. But for now, we're just going to say is drawing. And we're going to set that equal to true. We're then going to go to a function of draw. We're going to pass through E again because we want the event. We need to use the event. But actually, we're going to destructure the event, I believe. So we're going to use some destructuring to check only get the stuff we want in this event. So if we pass through some parentheses so we know that we get the event in here so the first param is the event so we can call this we can get put some curly braces and start destructuring and the value we want to pull out is client x which is the mouse position x but we want to just call that x so we're going to put a semi or a colon and pass through x we're then going to do the same for client y and we're just going to give that the value of y so that is how you do destructuring it's basically like pulling out components from a object so you do not have to do for example if this was e e dot client x etc loads time so that's just a bit messy and then we're giving it a new alias or alias which is going to be x so in the function draw we want to write a few things to actually get drawing right so we want to say we want to say if not drawing or is drawing so if we're not drawing we're just going to return because we just basically want to mean don't do anything else we want to set the ctx dot line width equal to three which is our default value here but we're going to set this e where if we change this to is what we're going to change this to but for now we're just going to leave it as free so we can see drawing because say ctx dot line cap and this is going to be equal to round so this is the how the end of your line when you draw it what it's going to look like um, we want it to be rounded so we're going to say ctx dot stroke style so this is going to be the color we want to set to and we're just going to set it to our dark color for now okay so now this is really simple so we're going to set up how to actually draw in this and we're going to use def ed his link will be in the description i followed a tutorial on his thing and we're going to follow his way of doing stuff so we're going to say ctx dot line two and we're going to pass an x and a y and now it's going to be the x and the y we destructure from our event value we're then going to set the strokes so we're going to stroke it so it actually draws this line um and that should be everything we need so but we also need to set up our stop function so we're going to say stop and we're not going to pass through an event this time because we do not need it but we're going to say draw is drawing is equal to false and ctx.begin path is just uh, ctx so actually let's not put that yet so you can understand what that actually does so let's go in here and let's refresh our page. And now if we click, as you can see, we draw. You can see it's, um, if I click somewhere else though and start drawing somewhere else, it, the line like snaps to that point. That'd be good if you wanted to make a line render at all, right? So you just did straight lines. But unfortunately, we don't want that. We want to actually draw freehand. So when we click, it's not always linked up. Um, and to do that, we just need to go into our end function and go ctx dot begin path and set that equal to that so this will every time we stop drawing it's going to create a new path so we don't have to follow on from the previous path and that is where the also so now if we refresh our canvas and we start drawing and we stop and we start drawing over here as you can see they're separate lines the next thing to notice is our lines are quite pixely if you can see that they look quite pixely when we draw so another thing to fix the pixeliness of that is to write under here ctx dot begin path. So we're going to create a new path as we're drawing straight after we start drawing. And then we're going to say ctx dot move to and then x and y. So we're going to move it to our, so we're going to create a new path after we've stroked and we're going to move it to our x and y position. And now when we start drawing, we refresh the page. And as you can see, the lines are a lot smoother. There is a bit still, uh, a bit of a pixelation a little bit but as you can see it's a lot smoother from what it was so that is good we don't need that open no more um as you just saw when i closed that our canvas got cleared and that's because if you resize the page at all in any way it will it will clear the page so that is that but we've got a 
one last thing to do. If we just tap, like just press down on our mouse, so I'm tapping right now on my mouse, it's not actually drawing anything until we start moving. If we start moving our mouse, that's when it happens. So to fix that, we just want to call draw as soon as we click and pass through the event what we pass through on start. So now if we refresh and we just click, as you can see, we get dots. So if you want to create a dot pixel or a picture, you can. Or if you need dots, for example, a face with a dot dot and a smiley face and a dot for a nose, you've got it. This is a great picture. It's actually really scary. I'm going to refresh that because, you know, who, who wants to, who wants that on there? in their brain all right so that is quite simple right guys but now we need to set up a few things so the first thing we're going to set up is how to clear the canvas so we're going to set up a function underneath stop and we're going to say function oh that's capitals so that's not good we're going to say function clear canvas and we are literally just going to write in here ctx dot clear rec so this is another canvas Another way to remove uh, a way to remove stuff on the canvas, you you will clear a rectangular space from the canvas, and you're going to say clear rect, and we're going to start from zero zero, so from the top left of the canvas, and we're going to delete all the way to. So we've got to give it a width now. So we're going to delete the whole canvas dot width, so everything on the canvas width and the canvas dot height. So that is at that's going to just what did that. Oh, there's just a speck on my screen. You won't see what I was trying to do there. It looked like my T came out as a funny character, but there was just a piece of dust on my screen. I apologise. And there you go. So that is that. But we now need to set up an event listener for that. So when we click our clear button here, we want to set up a event listener. So we're going to do that. We're going to create a few variables. So we're going to say const clear button is equal to document dot query selector because we added a class so we want to just go dot clear this isn't a best way to it. You should probably use an id but i'm this again this is all what's going to be on our app so it's fine we want to get the stroke weight so we'll say const stroke weight and we'll set that to document dot query selector and we're going to paste in that uh, class don't forget the docs it needs to know what it's uh, referencing to and then we're going to set a um a const oh where are we going uh we now need to get the other the color picker so we can set our color and we're going to say color picker is equal to document dot query selector and then we'll just go past the dot and the class name right there so now we've got those we want to set up some event listeners underneath our canvas event list and we'll say clear button so as we've already said, so we're going to say dot add event listener, and we're going to say click. So when we click this, we're then going to call clear canvas, and that is now going to clear our canvas. So let's refresh, let's draw, and let's click clear canvas. Bam! So that is the basics of clearing your canvas using a clear rectangle to clear the whole canvas from the X and the Y position, the starting positions, to where you want to move those two to the opposite sides. Okay, once you have done that, we now need to set up the strokes. We want to change the thickness, right? So we're going to say stroke weight dot add event listener. And this one's going to listen for change. So once we change it, we're then going to call change or stroke. We'll just go call it stroke. I don't know. What should we call it? Change stroke. We'll just call it stroke. We don't want to mess around too much. And we're just going to set a function by above clear rectangle saying function stroke. And we're just going to say, what did we call our variable in here? CTX.line width. Ah, so we just want to say CTX.line. So, um, do we? Do we want to do that? You know what? No, I don't think we do. We actually don't even need. So, on change, we just want to set a function. And we just want to say stroke.value is equal to. No, wait, sorry. What am I saying? I am not sure. We don't actually need this event listener, do we? Because we could just go in here and say stroke underscore weight dot value and that will set the value there. And the same for our colour. We can just say colour picker dot value and that is going to pass our value through. So let's see what happens. If we refresh and we draw, it still works. Let's change the colour to a yellow. And now if we draw, it works. So there you go. You don't actually have to do anything. If we go in here and we up this to, let's say, 7, there you go. So that is the basics of creating your own drawing app, everyone. I hope this has taught you something new about Canvas and how you could create your own drawing app. 
you guys could expand this and maybe make your own Photoshop in the web browser. So that would be awesome. If you can do that, please send me a screenshot because I'd love to know. Um, and I'd actually love to see the repository for that too because that would be insanely big. But at the same time, what if... if what have we got in here? So we've we've created our buttons to do to do things to change values. So we can set this all the way up to let's say seventy, and then we can draw this massive blob. Yeah, it's gonna have an eye, enough for eye, and it's gonna have a smiley face. There you go, and a little nose, um, and it's gonna have eyebrows. Uh, what go out of his head, and then hair. There you go. So this guy, this is this is. Keith, we're going to call him Keith, everybody. I hope you like that name. And we're going to clear the canvas. We just killed Keith. I'm sorry, everybody. Sorry, I'm I'm very hot. I'm in my car, and it's really hot. It's like 14 degrees, which doesn't sound too hot to Americans or anything, but I'm on about Celsius, which is, I still don't know. But when you sat in a car, it, it's baking. It's very hot. That's hot for the UK, all right? Let's let's leave it at that. Okay, guys, so I hope you, I hope everything was explained well enough for you to actually make, start making your own. I do recommend you know JavaScript and that first, obviously, before... Um, I should have said this at the start, but before starting this or understanding any of this. So if you didn't understand much of it, maybe look into more JavaScript. Maybe look at my other tutorials where I go over JavaScript in more detail. It's most of my beginning stuff where we go through Canvas. So if you don't know Canvas, I have loads of tutorials how to make games in Canvas. Um, snake game, that's a good one. If you go into my videos, it'll be day five or something like that. In between day one and ten are my Canvas, JavaScript Canvas tutorials. Um, so you can go have a look at that um, on my channel. Um, but for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Wait, if if you did, let's let's just do this. Yep, there you go. M70, is that still? Ah, oh, yes. Let's leave a thumbs up. A little thumb, that's a thumb. Yep. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, then we're going to have to shrink this down to 30. Uh, hit that sub button. Oh, yeah. And if you have any comments or any questions, then leave it in the comment section below, guys. <laughs> so, again, the GitHub link will be in the description. Same with Def Ed, because I did actually kind of steal his code a little, but I wanted to add more onto it with the changing the variables as we went along with it um again dev is awesome he has great tutorials and he's really awesome so go check out his channel it'll be in the link description below um other than that guys thanks for watching this video and peace out